first clip with the Canon PowerShot V10, George Washington National Forest. It's something you get excited about, but it's also something you dread. You know, we've told ourselves the whole time, if it's meant to be, it'll be, and that door will open. And that's what's kind of happened. We've had a door open for us, and now it's time to make that move. So we're stuffing our lives into boxes, which go inside of pods and garages, and you know, we're gonna start to make this move happen. And you, you don't realize how much crap you have until it's time to move. And it's a great time to purge some of the stuff that you have. And uh, that kind of leads me up to what we're talking about today some stuff. Canon recently put out this Canon PowerShot V10. What does that mean and what's it for? Who should buy it? Well, that's what we're gonna kinda look at. I'm not sure where the name came from uh, because as far as I know, this is the kind of the first camera. It's like a vlogging camera. It's targeted towards vlogging. I think it's the first of a series. So what's V10? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you know what V10 is in comparison to what I think is a brand new camera line, let us know down in the comments below. But what we're gonna do is, you know, I'm a sucker for, for camera stuff and uh, I've never had the perfect camera for every situation. And when I purchased the Canon R5, I thought it would be the perfect camera for every situation that I'm involved with, but I'm involved with a lot of different things. And it, it goes from hiking to, uh, you know, videos like this, to cooking on my uh, cooking channel, my barbecue channel, Delmarva Backyard. If you haven't seen that before, go check that out. Link will be down in the description. But I do a lot of different things. And I've come to learn that, you know, it, these are tools. And it's about selecting the right tool for the right job. And, it means you have to have the right tool for the right job whenever that job pops up. Since blogging is pretty much on its way out, Canon is a little behind the game, but that's the way Canon does things a lot of times. Don't get me wrong, I love Canon. I'm definitely a Canon fanboy and have all Canon stuff, but they could do some things better. And like, if they really wanted this to hit, it probably should have came out like four years ago. This is not a promoted video. This is Mike bought the Canon PowerShot V10 with his own money video. So for me, I'm doing hiking. I'm in the back country doing a lot of hiking. I need an ultralight camera. And that is the main reason I bought this. Will it produce good enough video to adjust while I'm hiking? And when you're hiking, sometimes you're in the woods and it's darker, and then sometimes you're on top of the mountain and it's brighter. How will it handle those situations? Audio, audio is huge. I do a lot of silent hiking videos where I'm just posting video clips of me and then using the audio that's in nature to, to kind of be the story. And they say that this camera, and it has supposedly some pretty big microphones on it, but they say that it's really good for that. Canon does. Let's find out. Let's see if it really kind of allows me to substitute some of my other gear for this, because this is a much smaller piece of gear than, than what I'm using most of the time when I'm hiking. Let's just touch on a couple of things that led me to buy this. And the first thing is the one inch sensor. It's a back illuminated one inch CMOS sensor. That means it should put out pretty good image quality and handle a, a fair amount of dynamic range. About 20.9 megapixels. That's fairly decent for a camera this size. It does aperture F 2.8 to F8 which gives you a decent range. It records in MP4 8-bit form with H.264 or MPEG-4 AVC. I wish it had H.265, but we'll take what we can get here, I guess. It does have a three and a half millimeter mic input. So if you wanna hook a mic to it, so you can use like the DJI mic that I'm wearing right now, you can use that with this. It has a self timer, so you can set it up and take selfies or start video. It uses a contrast autofocusing. Um, that's, you know, a lot of cameras use that. It's, it's kind of the technology of the past. Uh, we'll see how it works because there's definitely different levels of that contrast autofocusing. And one of the main thing is, is it has, or supposedly has a decent image stabilization system. So let's see how that works out. And those are the main specs for me for what I'm doing. Whether I'm hiking or I'm doing videos like this, or I'm just out and about, like, how good is this camera and will it suit those needs? Let's find out. The first thing I notice is the box isn't sealed in any way. There's not even a sticker right here. It's really weird. It's like I bought it used or third party. Packaging is one of the first 
pieces of evidence of quality. And if you don't have quality packaging, well, you start to wonder what's inside. Paperwork. I don't mean to be picky here. It's just, that's not a great presentation. I understand it, you know, it serves the purpose, but again, packaging is the first sign of quality. Let's see what's in here. This is a bit different. One of the things I'll say about this is it has just the internal battery. So you charge it by plugging it in. I'm not sure how to feel about that. Rather, that's a good thing or a bad thing. We'll see. Wow. It's just weird. I don't think I've ever gotten a cord in packaging like that. And not that it's a big deal. Again, it's just weird. But what matters is the camera itself. And again, this packaging. <laughs> Okay. It feels good in the hand. That, that's a Canon product. That's our record button. You can see the lens. Everything feels pretty sturdy. The screen flips out. So that's pretty nice. It's got like a little stand or kickstand, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so that goes all the way around front. I'm not sure why it clicks there, but it kind of clicks there to hold it there. And you're not going to stand it up like that. It does have a regular mount underneath so that you can attach a tripod to it, which is great. Very simple controls on the back. You have your power button, your review button, menu button. I'm not sure what this one does yet. Info, set, and trash plus power there. So pretty simple setup. That's a HDMI micro. Why? Why are we using that? Come on, guys. There's our mic input. This is what we should be using. We need to stick with a connection, right? Like, let's get one connection we can all jump on board with and stick with it. Now, I guess that's, uh, they wouldn't be able to sell you the cords then. But here we have the USB-C, what we thought is going to be the next standard connection, but before they can actually make it standard, I'll bet someone invents another one. Um, but this is to charge it, I imagine, and this one is to transfer data. Let's see if it's charged. It is. It is a touch screen, so these buttons are actually a little hard for, for me to work with, so I love that it's a touch, touch screen. So just take a moment to connect the camera with your smartphone. I'll click OK. From the smartphone paired via Bluetooth, you can control the camera or use the Canon app for easy Wi-Fi connections. So I imagine it wants us to use Canon Connect. We'll go to Canon Connect. Scroll all the way down. I guess we got to... Good Lord. Let's go to add a new device. And there it is. That's nice. So they've updated it. Pair request. Let's give it permission. Over here now, this one says connect. Click next. It says that they're connecting. And we are connected. So next. All right. Let's see here. A little door here. And that's where we put our card. Go that way, yep. Oh look, a regular Canon screen. That feels like a regular Canon camera. Setup is complete. Let's see if it'll let me remote live shoot. It just, it, it shouldn't take this long, you know? It's 2023, guys. Come on. There we go. Finally. You can change your settings down here. Change your focus mode, your white balance, timer. Tells you what format you're in. So in 4K, you can do 29.97 frames per second IPB, which is what we're going to do. First clip with the Canon PowerShot V10. How's that quality look, guys? Instead of judging it from my backyard in front of our pod, let's go on a little trip. And I think you'll enjoy this trip. Let's, let's see what this camera's made of.
woke up, it's morning, night one, in West Virginia, or along the Virginia, West Virginia border, George Washington National Forest. And I thought, what a perfect time to, to see how this camera really does. It's morning, it's that pretty time of morning where the light is just wonderful. So uh, let's see how it does. How's the sound? That's what I'm curious about. With two decent sized microphones, I'm just curious. Uh, I can't wait to get this back and and hear it. You know, see if we don't if you don't need a additional microphone, that is pretty awesome. All right, some low light conditions here. Let's see how it does. And with the microphones on top, uh, you know, I'm kind of curious, like, with the water being over there, kind of what it's going to sound like. Des is just exploring. We're up here on a ridge. Kind of see the view, it's a little cloudy. And so what's cool right now is I just flipped the screen up and now I'm like in selfie mode. Now, wondering what the uh, stabilization is like. I'll be excited to see how bouncy it is when I'm, you know, walking and talking and doing the whole vlog thing. What do you think? Good, not good? Got a little obstacle in the road here. Good thing we brought us all. So, we like cut there and then push it that way? Like that low? And here is campsite number two. Got Ethan over here in the Kamek all-in-one hammock system. Absolutely love this setup. Rained its butt off last night, kept them dry. Easy to set up. Bug net all attached to the hammock. Rainfly comes with it. Gets the job done ultra light. Richie is on the Nemo Hornet, two person Nemo Hornet. Although fitting two people in that tent is a bit tricky, unless they're, one of them is very small but an awesome tent. Nemo makes pretty good stuff. How long you had this? Three years? Yeah, good tent. Home is on both sides. Small footprint, good setup. Now, Des and I's arrangements for this evening are the iCamper SkyCamp Mini. This is my third night in total using this. Let me show you what our setup's like. This would be a great test of the low light performance. And there we go. I'm gonna be really interested to see what this looks like when I get it back on the computer because light is definitely a bit of an issue here. But my gosh, iCamper makes a beautiful product. And it's called the Sky Camp Mini because it has a sunroof. Window on each side. Wonderful setup. If you're interested in learning more about the iCamper, there'll be a link down in the video description. Check it out. This is night number two. 
and uh, it's um, we're in the iCamper SkyCamp Mini. I don't know how well it's focusing right now. The only thing on is a very small little headlamp. Daz is keeping guard. Why? I'm getting ready to go to sleep. Well, she'll be asleep too here very shortly, but she sees something moving out there, so it's got her attention. Come on. Come here. Guys? All right, let's go home. So to sum up my thoughts on Canon's PowerShot V10, I think the things that I like about this camera is its size, its image quality, its ease of use with Canon's standard menus. It's got a nice wide view on it. Autofocus seems to work very well, produces that beautiful Canon color, and you can buy it in black, or you can also buy it with a little gray strip on the top. Now you can take stills with this camera, however, I haven't tried that and I'm not sure how good they'll be. But based on the image resolution, they should be fairly decent. Now one of the things I don't want to say is a con, but is something I'm not real impressed with is Canon's image stabilization and to be honest I really wasn't impressed with it on the Canon R5 when I bought it and I'm not impressed with it on this V10. You know Canon makes some great stuff with some great technology. I just don't think they have their image stabilization game kind of down pat yet so I'd like to see them get rid of that wobble feeling when you're looking at it and uh, you know to have better image stabilization. I think other manufacturers are putting out image stabilized equipment that is just better when it comes to the actual image being stabilized. Another thing I'd like to see is I'd like to see the H265. I really don't understand why they didn't include that. That seems to be the way of the future. They dropped the ball on that I think. And then the other thing is the connection to the phone and this is more a concern with the app than it is this actual product because it seems like it takes you know a couple of minutes to connect to your phone to do any live shooting rather it's with this camera or any other camera i could bring up a live view of a security camera and have that live image in front of me in less than you know five seconds it just really shouldn't take that long to make that connection and start live remote shooting I do like the way the audio came out. All of the clips of the V10 footage are all natural. They're not color graded in any way and they're not enhanced with audio. So you're getting that native sound, that native look right out of the camera. And I think it does a pretty good job at both. And the audio I'm impressed with. It's not as good, obviously, as with a, you know, a mounted mic on top of the camera, like a Rode uh, shotgun mic or something, but it is pretty good. I kind of wish they had put one microphone on top and maybe one on the bottom, um, but you know, I'll take what I can get. Two fairly decent quality microphones allow you to pick up some good audio. The number one thing that I think can hold this and will hold this camera back is the fact that it's the size of a cell phone. How does it distinguish itself from a cell phone? I think the dynamic range is where it had the opportunity to really separate itself. And I think they did well with it, but I don't think they did well enough that people will buy this over their cell phone. You have to come up with a definitive reason for someone to spend $430. And so what is that definitive reason here? If it's size, the cell phone's probably gonna be the better choice. Image quality, again, I think it's close. When you're in perfect light, I don't think it can beat a cell phone. When the light gets a little bit sketchy, I think the V10 has a little bit of an edge on most cell phones. You can live stream with this device and that's very nice. It has some built-in filters and it allows you to do vertical mode. This is a nice piece of equipment. If they had released it four years ago, uh, I think they would have really hit a home run with it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do me a favor, share it with someone who may be interested in this type of gear review. And most importantly, tell us down in the comments below your experience, if any, with the Canon PowerShot V10. I hope you guys have an awesome week, and I can't wait to talk to you on the next episode.